So I've, I've written uh, loads of music in different styles from romantic stuff, electronic stuff, uh, orchestral stuff and for thrillers and, and so on. And my favorite thing, it's hard to say right now, it's uh, I'm going back to my kind of orchestral roots and uh, I love writing for um, for those orchestral drama stuff or uh, adventure fantasy stuff. That's uh, what I'm, uh, I'm into right now. And I really enjoy that because that also was kind of uh, the start. Uh, my first movies were uh, orchestral scores. And um, and uh, I had a big journey going uh, to, to smaller scores, uh, to thrillers, more electronic stuff. And now I'm moving backwards to the to the orchestral stuff. Uh, so in terms of musical genre, it's, it's orchestral music in general combined with everything. In terms of uh, a film genre, I really like uh, genre films. <laughs> I, I, I would like to do uh, science fiction films. Uh, um, I'd like to do a, a Western, a cool Western or stuff like that. So um, everything that, that's uh, off the, the, the beat for me, yeah. When I start a new score, um, there are different approaches. Uh, what, what's really important is to, to read the script, to um, to make my own own visualization of the story, and um, because once you see how the film is shot and uh, um, how the set looks and how the how the characters act, um, you're already stuck in a kind of direction. Once uh, you start with the script and have this fresh internal visualization um, of the story that you do on your own, you you ca can come up with ideas th that are more interesting, I guess, because once you see the picture, you the direction is maybe already set. So reading the script is, is a really important part and also talking to, to the director and, and letting him talk as much as possible about the, the characters, the story and, and the emotion and uh, the, the stuff between the lines in the script, uh, that stuff that is not in the script because the director has, has dealt with, the, with all of these uh, very long and he has a very clear idea most of the time at least and um, and that's very inspiring I mean uh, nothing more inspiring than a director sitting in front of you and burning for his story and and telling you about the emotional impact uh, the story had on him and and that's something that I find very inspiring I think uh, recently I was nominated for the European Film Composer Awards the Camille Awards for my score for Finisterre um, and uh, the journey for, for that movie was quite unusual, as is the movie itself, too. So um, the director is a, a close friend of mine, and we met, uh, as I told you in the beginning, we met at, uh, at uh, school and in the theater group. And uh, he worked on that movie for about seven years. So it's kind of a documentary score, um, um, but it's a special kind of documentary score. It's uh, called essay film because it's very poetic and very emotional uh, and, and not uh, not a purely documentary film. So he uh, journeyed around the world for about seven years and uh, uh, collected money and, and made another journey, collected money, made another journey and um, went to, I think, 25 countries in total, including North Korea or Cuba and stuff like that. And uh, um, and wanted to tell a story about people who live in socialist uh, um, uh, countries or socialist-led countries, and uh, uh, so we learn about the people who who live there. A German radio station um, was uh, was uh, telling the news about my nomination, and they played a piece of music of mine, and uh, um, uh, uh, a person of, of a, a local theater um, heard that and called me the other day and said, look, can we do a, a film concert? Uh, is there any of your feature films available for performing it live on, on stage? And I said, hey, uh, what about doing something different and let's do a movie nobody knows so we uh, can, can make a difference because everybody is used to watching Disney movies and Pirates of the Caribbean and stuff like that. But let's make some something more arty and, and uh, see how people react. And so that's when uh, we started uh, a post-production on, on Finisterre. So uh, 
Konstantin uh, edited the movie and uh, I started composing the last two months of, of his edit and so the music evolved together with the with the edit of the movie and the interesting thing was that we didn't record it first uh, but we uh, um, we performed the music live to picture before it even was recorded uh, we had around 120 musicians on stage and behind the behind the stage <laughs> with choir and orchestra and stuff like that so that was the first time the movie was uh, sh has been shown to to an audience and later on we of course recorded the score and uh, there was a, a feature version of it and it uh, made its way to the festivals and yeah that's how this movie came to life pretty unbelievable especially for i mean finisterre is is not a big movie in any sense it's really a, a, a independent film in, uh, at best you know i mean the the director really put his own money in and i put my own money <laughs> in to finance the music and stuff like that so there was no big uh, production company or something like that involved so uh, that alone is is amazing and being nominated by by all those uh, great composers from all over europe so uh, that was pretty amazing